this is where I start to click into something. When you, when your mind, this is this this, this whole forty percent rule shit I talk about all the time that I made up a long time ago. I started making it up through pain. So basically, the forty percent rule is, I am a strong believer that we quit. Because why? How the fuck does a two hundred ninety-seven pound cockroach guy right. who quit on everything is now considered the, one of the best men on the planet? How is that possible? It means I had to change one thing, my mindset. So there's no way in hell that that was in, but that was. That guy was in me. One that guy came down here and said, hey, guess what, man? You're a fat ass, but I'm gonna now make you a badass. I'm gonna miracle this shit to be a badass. No, it was in me. I had to believe and make that belief work. And through hard work, I did that. So the 40% rule is like we have a, like a car. Some cars have a governor on it. And when you get to like 92 miles an hour, that car will start doing this because it can't go any faster. Mm -hmm. Those cars that don't have governors on, like a, like a fast ass, whatever, Porsche or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm gonna fucking bury it, gone. We have that ability in us, but we have put this governor on our minds. And you have to, the factory that put the governor on that car, the factory is now you. That put that shit on your fucking mind. You gotta take that motherfucker off. Until you take it off, you're gonna constantly get to 92 miles an hour and do this. Cause you ain't gonna go faster. As a matter of fact, you might even go slower. So basically, I started realizing this through my life, through going through all these times. Anybody, not just Navy SEALs, but anybody that can accomplish anything that is hard. The only separator is, is that they really want to be there. There's some people that get inspired and that inspiration moves them to try to do something. But the inspiration is very high right now in this nice environment. We're in a nice environment, the ocean's out there. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you, if I wanna to go to the fucking refrigerator and get something to drink, mm -hmm. eat, I can. I watch a movie about some badasses, you're inspired. But the second you're not in this environment and you're actually doing what inspired you, that suck factor is now real. You can't just get off your fucking couch and get a fucking shake mm -hmm. or get a fucking box of donuts or, or turn the TV or go take a shit or a piss or mm -hmm. go, go get your girlfriend to cuddle up. No, mm -hmm. you're now there. And only those people who have been there a million times in their minds mm -hmm. and have lived in that water and have suffered a million times and realized my legs may break. My knee may break. My bones will hurt. I will be the coldest I've been in my life. I will be miserable and accept that. Because what happens is when, when you get in a horrible situation in life, your mind, I call it my one second decision. When you get in a horrible situation in life, your mind immediately says, get the fuck out of here. Everybody does, even if you want to be there. But it starts to have all these different questions in your mind that one second. And it says, okay, why are you here? Why are you doing this? Why this? Why that? And then you start to say to yourself, if you don't want to be there that bad, I have a beautiful wife at home, man. Why the fuck am I doing this, man? Like, this is stupid. This is gonna get these guys injured. For, like, like, they're gonna pay for this for the rest of their lives. I'm not gonna break my body up to do this. Your mind starts to say, yeah, this is stupid. But if you have, if you are already knowing that this is gonna happen to you, you have all the answers to these questions that your mind starts to give you when you're in suffer mode. And that's what I realized over and over again. You have to be there over, but not there at the graduation. You gotta be there in the worst in the parts suffering. that you know over and over again. You gotta live that in your mind. You ask yourself, why me? So, Saying good, that should fix your attitude, but that alone, that, will, that alone will not fix your problems. If you're having problems, sure, say good. That's perfect. But then don't ask yourself, why me? Instead, ask yourself, now what am I going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Ask yourself that question. And then figure it out. 
figure out what you're going to do say to yourself I am going to detach I am going to assess the situation I am going to come up with a plan and I am going to execute and then start moving it's it's not gonna be a perfect plan but take action action that moved you in a positive direction and if it ends up being the wrong direction that's fine at least you've learned where not to go now where this gets tough is if it is something that seems like it's completely out of your control and you know what some things are completely out of your control and that's fine and when that happens you ask yourself what can I control what can I control that will make this situation a little bit better and then you go don't get crushed by things going wrong ask yourself what am I going to do and then go do it in my old job sometimes we would be facing really miserable situations things that we were gonna have to do maybe we had to go on a dive a long dive and the water was freezing cold or we had to go on a long patrol through really steep terrain and it was hot or maybe we had to get our our boats through the surf zone when there was giant waves and invariably in those situations someone in the platoon would say in a low voice well this is gonna suck <laughs> and then you know what we do we do it anyways that's right sometimes things are gonna suck and you know what you do you do them anyways i want to see like almost like the Colosseum in Rome, let's fucking go to the fucking Colosseum. And the only way to see who the baddest motherfucker is is to suffer. You can't do it by writing a paper. So let's go, because why? What I found out through my life was I thought of myself as some weak little bitch kid. And what I found out, and the only message I want to get across to people is once you change one thing, your mindset, you can attack everything. Mm. And I find it fascinating. I'm fascinated. Because I'll be in these moments. I put these guys on some fucking pedestal. They do it with me, and they shouldn't. And I was this guy who was a piece of shit looking at these, my God, how are you guys? It's amazing. But once I worked my way up there, I said, my God, man, we can all compete, motherfucker. Let's go. So do I like suffering? I like suffering in the way that is competitive that brings out the absolute best in me and in everybody else so like I want to see a man be defeated I want to see a man get broken and say fuck you there's so many times in life you don't want to be doing what the fuck you're doing you can't just fucking quit remember this it's in the hobby it's in the fucking joke it's a fucking lifestyle so what you say to yourself is important there's no fucking coach, there's no trainer to keep you going, it's only you. So think about this, you've been working your whole life to get a fucking seat at the table. The seat at the table is going to be the best amongst all the best people in your fucking career field. So you finally get that letter. It's steak, lobster, it's a big dinner. Everybody's showing up, dressed to the nines. Make sure you show up soaking wet from fucking getting after it, working out hard. Towel on your neck. You respect the event. So make sure you put that towel on that nice chair so you don't fuck it up. The whole thing is this. Don't say a word. Stay uncommon amongst uncommon people. You're never done. Don't stop when you're tired. Stop when you're done. Stay hard.